A little while ago, I've made a video about how you can connect iRay Server to Dash Studio and how you can render still images with Dash Studio through iRay Server. Today, I'm here to tell you it also works with animations. I didn't know this at the time. Thank you so much to a tip from Rob from Infinite Compute. He told me how to do it and I thought I'm going to share the good news with you. Let's see how to do it. This is my little flag waving scene that I've built in a recent live stream on the official DAS channel. It's just a wind node that blows against a plane that is subdivided a few times and that is you know, how, how it wafts. I don't really want to render the whole animation, so I think I'm going to start on frame 30 and give that as my range here. So the first part is how to set that up and that's on the render settings tab on the editor under general. Here's something we can set up in regards to frame size and uh, the render type if we want it to be a still image, an image series or movie. All of these work through iRay server. It's just, you know, pick whichever one you like. I might just pick the movie type just for simplicity's sake. I'm going to save that on my desktop as flag version 2 perhaps. And then I will go and pick the range. So that's frame 30 to frame 120. Under progressive rendering, I might just pick 50 iterations. So it doesn't have to be something major. It's just a demo. And now comes the interesting part. I'm going to go and connect iRay server to this whole thing. So under the advanced tab, that's under render settings, under advanced, you see the bridge tab here. And this is where we will connect iRay server. This is not the correct IP address. Here. Let me just go dig it out. This is an instance that I've spun up on Rob's system. So this is at Infinite Compute. And I'm going to make a more in-depth video on how to do that uh, so that you can follow along and use that service if you so desire. Let's go and paste that IP in here. You need that to connect to iRay server. I'm hoping we have the correct credentials here. I didn't change the default, sorry. But uh, that's the one. That's, that should be that. Secure box should be unticked unless you're told otherwise and hit connect. And that's us in principle connected to iris server now. Now, usually if you had a still image, you can go and add this to the queue. But when we do this with iRay server now, it will only render the one frame of this animation. And then iRay server will process the queue and that's one frame of the animation. So in order for this to work, we need to go into the iRay server web interface and make sure that the queue is not started. So the implication is that usually when you start the queue, the server is ready to process still images. But when we do that, look at this important tick box here that it was called rendering and that is currently grayed out so I can't use that and that is because the queue is on. So this is the same setting that you use for the interactive streaming of the viewport. So what we need to do then is we need to stop the queue in iRay server so you can submit jobs but iRay server isn't going to process them go back to DAS Studio and we'll see that this tick box now becomes available. So the moment we tick it, we can go and switch this viewport to iRay and then we'll get the results streamed back. Or lo and behold, we can hit the render button and then it will render whatever is usually happening on our local hardware in iRay server. Let me show you how it works. The moment we do that, you get this little pop-up window here like you normally do. And that now says rendering in iRay and it also says iRay bridge detecting changes and so forth. Usually it will tell you CUDA device 0, CUDA device 1 and so forth depending on how many GPUs and CPUs you've got available on your system. But that is an indication that my local hardware isn't being used now and this instance of DAS Studio is talking to iRay server, which is really exciting. So let's just let it rip for a while and we'll see when we get back and watch the final animation. The first time, if you have a large-ish type animation with a lot of data in it, the first time you do this, it might take a little bit of time because all the assets need to be transferred to iRay server. But the system is really clever in that it caches these assets. So my flag was really small, but if I had something with a character and a bit of geometry and all that, it'll maybe take me five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe even longer to submit all the assets. And you'd think, hey, nothing is happening, but it is, it is. So it is, you know, it's just sending all the assets there to the iris server. And then subsequent images will be kind of sent the same way, but iris server will be clever enough to say, hey, I already have that asset. I don't need it again. And then just use it. So at that point, it'll just be a matter of seconds for every frame to be sent uh, less than seconds, you know, to come back. While we wait, I was going to show you something else. In iRay server, if we go under settings here, 
and uh, have a look at this box here, the VCA connection. This is something that you can enable if you have multiple servers clustered with IRA servers. So if you have one server, it doesn't really matter if this is enabled or disabled, but if you have multiple servers clustered together to work as one large unit with multiple GPUs across multiple servers, like I've explained in my previous video, then you should enable this because then all of them will work together with animations. Just one of those things to remember. Also, while we wait, I just thought I might take this opportunity to explain these two modes, just in case you're confused about this. So iRay Server has these two modes, queue processing and streaming mode, for better or worse terminology. I'm sure it's called something else, but that's in my mind how I remember it. You can either ask iRay Server to process things that are being submitted image by image, and then you can disconnect from it so you can close your local instance of Dash Studio down, you can even shut down your computer if you like, and let iRay Server render it. Or you have the streaming mode, which means you're constantly connected to iRay Server and the whole GPU power or whatever processing power iRay Server provides will be utilized by your local instance. So for this version of iRay server that we're currently utilizing, the streaming mode, you need to be connected. So if you have a long animation that takes you 12 hours to render, you can't disconnect from iRay server. iRay server has to be on for that amount of time and your local instance of Dash Studio will also need to be running for that amount of time because it receives the images one by one live back from iRay server. One of those things important to remember, Exciting stuff. We're coming up to the last frame of the animation, frame number 120 after nine minutes of rendering. This is what I would expect to come up if you're rendering a movie. If you've rendered a series of still images, then this won't come up. They'll just be available on your hard drive. This also works. I've tested this. So we'll just go and say, OK, that means now this is going to be compiled and wrapped up into a video. And that should now be available on my desktop. There it is. Flag version two and Aha! Look at it wave! How exciting. So, wonderful, super exciting news. We can render animations with iRay Server and Dash Studio. After all, it's just knowing how to do it. So once again, thank you so much to Rob from Infinite Compute, whom I had a really long chat with about how all these services connect to Dash Studio and how we can make the world a better place. I'm going to make another larger, longer video about Infinite Compute soon. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, then please let me know in the comments. I will also link to the previous iRay Server video in in the description. And uh, other than that, I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.